Hello! I believe I am live. Um, greetings from East Nashville, Tennessee on what is a beautiful Monday afternoon, 26 seconds afternoon. Um, <clears throat> I hope you all are doing well. Let's we'll see if we can get some people in here. Um, what is happening here? Um, how's everyone doing? I don't know if I can, uh, okay, I can see chats. Edward O'Day, hello, it is good to see you. Edward is my manager and my friend. I love that guy. Um, gonna sing some songs for you all today. Gonna tell some stories. Uh, the good folks at American Songwriter have been kind enough to have me on and, um, they've asked some questions. We have these little, uh, pre uh questions that are i'm going to do my best to answer it's if i oh, there you are american songwriter you can ask me as well um but yeah i'm gonna sing uh let's see six songs or so and maybe answer some questions tell some stories and then uh and then i'm gonna get outside and and probably go for a run because it is a beautiful day outside oh nice cool it looks like we've got some folks in here now if you'd like hi tracy it is good to see you here. Um, if anyone here wants to um, share this from their their own personal page, they share it, we'll get more viewers in here. It looks like viewers are starting to go up pretty quickly, so that's great. Um, anyhow, uh, sipping from my National Parks mug, I've got a fun story to tell you about the National Parks as the set progresses. This is uh, some some tea from High Garden. The, the High Garden um, tea shop was uh, was destroyed in the tornado that happened. God, uh, man, all this has been I guess like six weeks ago, six or seven weeks ago. Crazy, time is flying. But uh, I'm good friends with Leah and Joel there, and they have uh, they are I think starting an online company. So I'm drinking some Sing Tea, which is delicious. Uh, if you can check out High Garden's online store when they open that up. Mm, mm, mm. All right, looks like these notifications are getting in my way. How's it going, Kara, Khan, Priscilla, Paul, Lone, Lisa, Dean? Hello from Liverpool. Nice. In Pakistan? And you're in the UK as well? Cool. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Um, well, today's lineup is going to be amazing. You're going to hear from several of my friends at Big Yellow Dog. Big Yellow Dog is the, the, uh, the company that I am signed to and... Uh, do a lot of writing for them, them over there, and uh, the artist roster is fantastic. You guys are in for a treat with Logan and uh, Tanil and uh, uh, and Keelan today. So please stick around for those. And a uh, hi from Brazil, nice. Hi Jill. Um, but I'm gonna start off with uh, a little song called L O V E L O V E. And, uh, and then I'll answer some questions that American Songwriter has posed for me. It might be alarming, so sorry, not sorry. I cannot help myself to let this go, I gotta let you know. I'm building an army of courage to show me the word to tell you how I really feel, I really feel. I want to say something, say something I can't get over it. I want to make something, make something of this feeling that just won't quit. It's deeper than an ocean song. It's bigger than a setting sun. I want to say something, say something I can't get over it, can't get over it. Might not be fancy, clumsy at dancing, 
But I can write you in a hundred songs and sing them all day long. There's nothing to doubt here, so I'll spell it out here. The word to tell you how I really feel, I really feel. I wanna say something, say something I can't get over it. I wanna make something, make something of this feeling it just won't quit. It's deeper than an ocean song. It's bigger than a setting sun. I wanna say something, say something I can't get over it, can't get over it. I want to say something, say something. I want to make something, make something. It's deeper than an ocean song. It's bigger than a sad and sound. I want to say something, say something. I can't get over it, can't get over it. Yellow, oh, 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 Thanks for listening in from <clears throat> South Africa, man, <clears throat> in Los Angeles, and from all over the world. I love this. Hope you like my National Parks mug. <clears throat> I'm trying to hit all of them, um, though they're all closed down right now. Hopefully, I'll have uh, more of a chance later this year or next to get back to it. But um, So, American Songwriter has asked me what inspired this song, uh, L-O-V-E-L-O-V. Uh, and I'll tell you a fun story about this song. I, um, I wrote this, uh, I'd written this uh, a few months before, um, but I had taken my, uh, my now fiance, who is out on the porch outside, um, to meet my family for the first time uh, in Belzona, Mississippi. And there's this beautiful spot. Um, there's this beautiful spot called Sky Lake that have some of the oldest um, cypress trees in America. And uh, they have this beautiful little boardwalk. You can go out in the swamp area. And uh, I've made up my mind that this is where I was going to, um, to tell her that I loved her for the first time. And I'd been really guarded for a number of years having, you know, I've had, I've had some failed relationships, I'm sure as many folks have had. Um, so uh, I, I was kind of using that word safely and I'd saved it for this time, but we got to the, the biggest cypress tree there, and I, I told her that I loved her, and then um, and then uh, we went back to the car, and I played her that last song, L O V E L O V E, and it was a really, really um, special and beautiful moment for the the two of us. Um, so that's a cool story about it. Uh, another question American songwriter has asked are are songs about love challenging to write since it is such a common theme? <laughs> that is a great question. Uh, I do think. It, it can be challenging sometimes, but it's such a universal thing, and it's such a big thing. It's such a, an amazing emotion uh, that we get to experience and share that um, there's just, it's its own little universe. So there's so many different ways to write about it. It never really gets old for me. Um, uh, so for me, no, love is not very challenging to write about. I do, I do find that sometimes I can... I can, uh, I'll be like, oh, someone's already written about that. So how can I maybe tweak it a little bit to, uh, to make it unique or, uh, just expand upon it. But, um, and then finally they've asked, how do you approach songwriting to make the love song unique? Hmm. Uh, I think in this case, 
uh, it was really just expressing um, kind of the yearning and like it was really truly expressing like what I was wanting to say this whole time. Um, we had this, we had this thing, uh, my fiance and I, where instead of saying, I love you before we either of us had said it, we would just be like, we would say something or we would look at each other and we would just go, mm hmm, mm hmm. But we wouldn't actually say, I love you. And so it was like this yearning, like I, I, I really wanted to express that. And, uh, and I think this song sort of uniquely, um, was a, a, a cool opportunity to uh, display that. Um, all right, next up on the list. Actually, first off, how's everyone doing? Need you to work with an artist, hip hop here in South Africa. Cool, I love hip hop. I like South African hip hop too. Um, National Parks Band, I, you know, I've never heard much of their stuff. But how's everyone doing? It's great you're all here, thanks for tuning in. Uh, I'm going to play a, a song I wrote a number of years ago. This is called Hostage. Never saw you come in today, haunting, wanting something to scream from your skin. Just looking for a companion, talk to me. As if you want to free me. Her name is singing from the choir Watching your breath and getting higher and drawn to you As we play this prelude But I'll never make it out alive Unless I find a place to hide inside your love Looking for a cover And I wanna hold you hostage Wanna keep you for ransom tonight No matter what the cost is Never letting you get away
right. Oh, that was um, Hostage. And uh, here are some questions that uh, American Songwriter has asked about that. Um, what was the songwriting process like for this song? And was this a co-write? I'll answer both of those. Um, it was a co-write. I wrote that with uh, another amazing, one of my favorite artists who is also with Big Yellow Dog. His name is Daniel Tashin. He's uh, uh, an incredible songwriter. He's one of my favorites in the world, but he's a Nashville staple. Um, but uh, this, I think this is our first song we ever wrote together. Um, and we just got together and uh, played some music that we had been vibing on from other artists. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I think we played some like Zero Seven and some different things. And like we were just like, yeah, let's write something that kind of has like a spooky, dark vibe to it. It's really fun getting together. The whole co-writing process is just a ton of fun for me because you can uh, uh, you can just see each other's process, and then also you get to like create this amazing thing with all of your with uh, both of your influences. But um, yeah, we wanted to uh, just sort of create something that had that. Um, I think Zero Seven was the band like we were way into at that time, but uh, and then it just fell out. Like a lot of the good songs, you know, just uh, for me at least, they come out usually within like an hour you write them. Um, uh, so that's that. Um, and next up, let's see here. Let's move along to some newer music. I wrote this next song with uh, my pals Ian Fitchick, who does a lot of uh, production work with uh, with Daniel Tatchin. Wrote this with Ian Fitchick and Todd Lombardo, and it is on my most recent EP. And this is called. Any one major influence? We will get to that. But uh, over there, I've got a lot of influences uh, in the UK and America. But uh, I think uh, the Beatles are probably my number one influence. But uh, Jeff Buckley's a huge influence. We'll talk more about that. Stevie Wonder. <laughs> uh, this is Evelyn. can't take it when you're looking at me with those eyes. I'll lie and I'll fake it. I will be the perfect alibi. I cry. I try. We can't hide the attraction, the reaction stirring deep inside. Where you go to let your secrets hide And go cry When I'm alone and you're with him Evelyn I don't want to be a second Fool again Wishing we were something Hanging on the chance that I won't always be the other guy. Hey! 
That was Evelyn. It's off of my uh, most recent EP, Sign Language. Um, and uh, a question here posed by American songwriter is, how did you get connected to Big Yellow Dog? That is a great question. Um, Carla, who is one of the, uh, the co-owners of Big Yellow Dog, I've known her for years, um, uh, often known through different uh nashville sessions and just through the circle of nashville and um we, we i guess kind of lost touch for a while but um my uh my friend at ascap so you have different pros if those of you that are song i know what ascap is but um the different pros uh are people that collect money for you and collect your royalties if you're on radio or tv and film and things like that but one of my um my very good friends uh evan Musto, um, uh, she works at Ash ASCAP here in Nashville, and I went by to see her, and I was like, hey, I've been doing the, the whole acapella thing for a while, but I've also been, uh, I'm back to writing songs, and I'd love to, to help uh, to find a pub deal if you know of any, anyone looking right now. And so she's actually the one that sort of reconnected me and Carla at Big Yellow Dog and uh, got everything fired up, and uh, it has been such a cool fit over there. Um, uh, and I, I guess I'll, this will lead into the next question as I will expand upon that. Uh, they've asked, can you tell us more about publishers and how they assist songwriters? Um, so each publishing company is a little bit different. I've had a publishing deal before, Big Yellow Dog, and I've had a record deal before. And uh, it's different. I've worked with some, some great people then too. Um, at uh, Warner Chapel back in the day, I was signed to the great Judy Stakey, um, who taught me a lot. Uh, and. Uh, I don't know, this time around, it's been really cool for me to be um, be where I'm at now. I, I've, uh, I've always felt uh, like I kind of lean towards the cinematic approach of writing. Like I, I love writing for film and TV. I also love writing pop. Uh, I love writing for other people. I love writing for myself. I like doing a lot of different things. I like producing. Uh, and even within my own stuff, I like kind of the, the folky acoustic thing. And then I've, I've got a whole other project called Cool Cool, which is like super pop. It's music that I would want to run to, and uh, and when I when I got the big yellow dog, I explained all this, and they're like, "Great, that's exactly what we want right now." So it's it's been a really cool fit to um, to be at uh, an independent publisher uh, here in Nashville that really sort of lets me explore explore the room and get to do a lot of different things. Um, upstairs, I work a lot with um, the film and TV department, and this year I've gotten quite a few different syncs and stuff for. Um, for TV and film, um, and uh, we're super excited about that. And then downstairs with uh, Lauren and JC, we're working with uh, getting songs pitched, and uh, and then uh, Kara and my friends in the label division are help help me release songs, whether it's my solo stuff or a side project. But uh, it's just a great place to be there. The, um, uh, no one's paying me or twisting my arm to say this, but honestly, I'm just I'm honored to be it's such a, a great place to work where everyone's uh, they work so hard to. Um, to get your your song seen by other people and uh they're just good people i love it it's great i couldn't ask for a, a better place to be right now um uh what role do independent publishers play in nashville um well i kind of ex i guess i explained the role from from big yellow dog and that's that's as far as i know right now so uh that will lead me to my next song um i was just talking about uh <laughs> One of my side projects uh, called Cool Cool. Uh, I'll talk about it more, but uh, it's me and my friend Bergy, Mr. Sam Bergerson, and uh, and it's been so much fun. I'll play this song on acoustic guitar, but it's meant it's quite electronic, and uh, and it's got a, a lot of groove to it. All the songs have um, just makes you want to move. Uh, I'll I'll expand upon that after this, but this is called. Get out and get into it, and it is dedicated to the national park system. We 
breathe here I want life to live here I want to breathe in as much as I can Sun shine up on your shoulders Kiss on my skin Come give me your hand Let's take a walk outside Put your feet in the ocean Bubble sun and lotion Let's see the mountainside Walk on top of the world One hell of a beautiful feel I could tell you what it feels like But you wouldn't get it Sometimes you've just got to see it To believe it for yourself Get out of your head Get out of your bed Get out, get in, get out, get in, get out, get, out, get into it Oh, no, I can't remember how long the past would be best. Oh, no, I can remember how long the past, but I must confess that I've come a long way now. It didn't come easy, it wasn't all peachy, I had to keep falling down. To look up and see these arms that were reaching out. But I could tell you what it feels like, but you wouldn't get it. Sometimes you've just got to see it, to believe it for yourself. Get out of your head, get out of your bed. Get out, get in, get out, get in, get out, get into it. Get out, get into it. That's a song that is um, uh, from a new release that from one of my side projects called Cool Cool. Check out Cool Cool. Uh, it's a lot of fun. The album I wrote the whole thing. It's sort of about um, most of the songs are about like my my journey and recovery. I've actually I'll be coming up. I'll be five years sober on Sunday. Woohoo! Coming up soon. Um, but the whole album sort of kind of based on that storyline and like how. It got me into like running and all these weird, amazing things that I never would have found otherwise. And uh, um, speaking of, on Saturday, getting out and get into it, I'm going to be attempting my first 50 mile run here in my neighborhood. It's going to be um, very safe. We're going to uh, keep a distance from, uh, from people, social distance running. I'm, I'll be just sort of doing loops around my neighborhood and, uh, and then I've also encouraged my friends in the neighborhood just to kind of poke their head out the door and wave and encourage me on. But um, I'll be posting stories on my Instagram page, which is, uh, I believe it's Jeremy B. Lister, Jeremy Blister. Um, so keep, keep, uh, keep up with the run next Saturday, April 25th, 50 miler. Hopefully it'll happen. And uh, you can uh, tune in and encourage me along the way if you care to do so. Um, but anyhow, yeah, when I was um, going through uh, my detox from a lot of different substances, uh, I watched Ken Burns, The National Parks, and uh, it inspired me so much. I mean, I've always loved the outdoors since I was a kid, but uh, uh, I was, you know, in a very, very uh, sick place in my life, but I just watched it on repeat as I was sort of in a fetal position for three days. Um, and then when I, I finished, uh, I, I sort of, was saying if, if I live through this detox, I'm going to go out and I'm going to hit up all the national parks. 
and I'm hitting them all. I think I'm like 17, 16 or 17 in right now, but um, it's been a lot of fun doing that. Actually, I proposed to my fiance at the Grand Canyon uh, late last year, which was an amazing thing to do. Jeremy Sanders. Jeremy Sanders is my running coach. He's here listening as well. He's uh, Jeremy, you can cheer me on uh, Saturday, 50 miler. We'll see if we get through it. Um, uh, and I think that answered the question that American Songwriter had asked. They had asked uh, to tell us about the Cool Cool Project. But uh, yeah, the songs are a lot of fun. Everyone go on um, I don't know, iTunes, Spotify, whatever you listen to, and check out Cool Cool. Go out, run, get to it. Um, going to play a brand new one here. Um, I'm super excited about this. Hopefully, I can get it recorded this week, you know, as things uh, have, uh, you know, we've been in quarantine. It's difficult to move these things. But I have been learning how to record out of my house, which is really cool, and sharing files back and forth with my producer friends. friends. But um, this is a brand new one, and... If you can uh, pick up on the lyrics, it is rather pertinent to uh, uh, to the times we're going through, and it's uh, just about the sort of the the yearning of uh, of missing people and how nice it's going to be when uh, we get to see uh, see people again and give them a hug. Uh, but uh, I will tell, I'll tell you more about this song right after I finish it up. <clears throat> and this is brand new, so bear with me. Let's see what happens. I see you again. Gonna hold you like my entire life, putting it on you. When I see you again, gonna tell you everything like the universe depended on it. Last night, drove across town. Doors were locked, the streets were quiet. Was looking for a path. Could I ask? It seemed like everyone I saw was wearing a mask. When I see you again, I'm gonna hold you like my entire life, depending on it. Oh, oh. When I see you again, oh, oh. Florida, Chicago, Moss Point, 
people coming and tuning in from all over. I love it. It's good to see you all here. Um, so if you're just tuning in, um, I'm playing songs and I'm answering some questions that an American songwriter has asked me. And uh, they asked about the last song. How did you land on the song title? Uh, and did the song start off with lyrics or a riff? Uh, this is actually quite the unique song for me. Um, uh, I was sort of on the back end of this song. This was an idea that my good friend, Mr. Tim Easton, everyone should check out Tim Easton. I, I know that American songwriter has, uh, has, I think, done some work with him before in the past, too. He's a brilliant writer, um, especially in the folk world, and uh, he's a nice guitar player, and he's just a beautiful lyricist as well. But So he came to me with uh, this idea, uh, and he'd actually, he had quite a quite a bit of it done, and uh, I'm really glad he came to me, because it really, really, uh, it hit me in a heavy way. I've actually, first time I, I started recording it, uh, <laughs> I started crying. I started tearing up, and uh, but Tim and I are really good friends, and we share a lot of very vulnerable things with each other. So it was uh, amazing to be a part of this and sort of the conversation about um, uh, you know what it's going to be like to see people that we really love again, and like sort of like the the yearning that we're feeling right now, being away from people and the disconnect. Um, uh, and it's just a beautiful thing. But I believe the idea started with a a friend a, a friend of ours. Their their daughter was staying over at Tim's house uh during part of the quarantine and she was just asking like when will i get to see my parents again when will i get to see my parents again and that sort of sparked the idea um of this whole song but um yeah so so glad that this song is uh in existence and uh, everyone if you haven't already um check out tim easton he's just a brilliant songwriter and uh, i'm so happy that um he had me along for this one um ah oh, joey plunkett Good to see you, Joey, who just uh, chimed in there. He's my old bandmate from Mississippi, uh, one of my early rock and roll bands as I was just a kid. I think I was like 18 or 19 when we started that group. We had a group together called Geronimo Rex. And uh, Joey is also an exceptional songwriter, uh, singer, bass, guitar player. Um, uh, check out Joey's music and all the projects that, that he's working with as well right now. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna do one more song and then <clears throat> answer a few more questions after that. But um, I think I'm doing good on time. I don't know how long these things are supposed to go. Do any of you have a question? I'll I'll uh, it's probably like thirty seconds. So I'll just scroll up and um, man, it's so good to see everyone from all over the world. We've got South America, we've got Africa, we've got Europe. Uh, all, all in the house. This is great. Um, yeah, this is fantastic. Oh, Shannon, thank you very, very much. It's good to hear that. Um, well, yeah, any questions real quick before I play the last tune? Um, it's been a, a, a fun, a very interesting time. You know, this whole quarantine has, has taught me a lot about myself. Um, uh, I've been really trying to practice a lot of my healthy routines and getting up in the morning and practicing gratitude and meditation. And, uh, uh, yeah, tell us about the friendship run. Uh, I, I just spoke about that, uh, but I will tell a little bit more. This Saturday, um, once again, I'll be attempting a 50-mile uh, a run here in my neighborhood, but it's also a part of this race called the Friendship Run that I'm putting together, which if anyone wants to do it, there's an event on the Facebook page um, where uh, what will happen is uh, it's solo runs. Everyone, you can't obviously run together at the time, so it's, it's practicing social distance. But people are running uh, around their neighborhood or through their city, and the goal is to run and make a little map uh, where you run by your friend's house, and you can wave to your friends, them from their doorway, and you from the street. And uh, I know a lot of people have been training for like today. Actually, was the is was supposed to be the Boston Marathon. I'm I'm a big runner, and uh, it's it's sad that a lot of people you know they train so long. It's such a big deal to get to these big races, and uh, they had to cancel these. So. Uh, what I'm encouraging is for people to go out very safely uh, to to run and make uh, a little course that would run to their friends' houses, and they would go simply just wave and be encouraged by their friends, and they still get to have a, a bit of a, a an event that's uh, based around either a race that they were had signed up for, or maybe if they want to try something new. But um, that is the friendship run. <laughs> um, let's see, I got a couple questions here. Are you still making ice cream? I am. I don't make it anymore, obviously. I make it just for fun. Uh, 
we made ice cream. Sarah and I made ice cream. She made brownies and I made like a peanut butter ribbon ice cream uh, last week. It was so good. Why oh, there's still some in the freezer. Uh, do you practice? How do you practice singing? What is important for you to maintain neat singing voice? <clears throat> that is a great question. Craig, um, you know, I, I have found that the older I've gotten, the more it's important for me to get up and, you know, warm up. I used to never warm up. I used to treat my voice <laughs> terribly, but it has survived the storm. Thank goodness. But, uh, uh, I would say drinking plenty of fluids, a healthy diet, um, uh, before I sing, I, you know, I have water and tea. This is my high garden sing tea and herbiprofen, sort of a mixture of two teas, which is, um, which is good. Uh, avoid, avoid that dairy. Dairy is no good for you in general, but especially it's not good for the voice. Uh, and then <clears throat> exercise. Um, who to thunk it? You know, um, you know, staying in, in, in good shape, the more your, your lungs are in good shape, your heart's in good shape. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's great for your voice as well. Those would be my, um, I guess my biggest suggestions, but all right, I'm going to move along and play this final tune. What guitar? I'll do this guitar. Which guitar sounds better? I can't, this is Fender, small guitar, or the Crafter, large guitar. I, I need to know these things. What, what sounds better out there? Fender and Cracker have been so kind enough to endorse me and give me these guitars. I love this little parlor. It's so much fun to play. It's very easy. I love the Fender guys here in Nashville, too. You should buy some Fenders. Good folks. Uh, but I'm going to play this last song on the bigger body. I'm going to tune up real quick. This is a song I wrote with uh, my pal K.S. Rhodes. He just released a song this week, or actually last Friday, called Chess. So good, like insanely good. KS is also one of my favorite artists. I heard, I saw someone posting T.O. 10 out of 10. He's one of my mates in 10 out of 10, and we've done a whole lot of writing together. But uh, I would uh, suggest everyone to go check out KS Rhodes. Uh, chess. It's almost there. Oh, you like the Fender. I like it. The parlor is a sweet guitar. Come on, baby. Here we go. This is picturing you. is surely the nicest time of year in all my life i've never seen a sky so clear i took a photograph but something's missing here the wine is nice but it should be sweet i'm just picturing you inside this picture with me it's like a postcard dream, but it's still incomplete, cause I'm just picturing you inside this picture with me. The Tower of Peace is leaning high above us all. It looks as drunk as me, like it's about to fall. I put my bottle down and light up a palm of the Van Gogh sky. And this Monet scene, and I'm just picturing you inside this picture with me. Oh, Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, paint me a picture of you inside this picture with me.
countryside and saw the Colosseum. I am in ruins, baby, wish that you could see them. I asked for directions and they told me Carpe Diem. It's beautiful here on these cobblestone streets, but I'm just picturing you inside this picture with me. It's like a postcard dream, but it's still incomplete, cause I'm just picturing you inside this picture with me. Picturing you, uh, mine is part of the bridge. <laughs> um, I love that song. It's one of my favorites. I also do it with my acapella group, Street Corner Symphony. Uh, we've got our version on our album, uh, Southern Auto Nostalgia, you can check out. Um, but uh, American songwriter has asked me, what is your dream co-write? Writers can be dead or alive. <sighs> I'm going to have to go with... Uh, Paul McCartney, no doubt. I don't actually. I don't know. I probably just fanboy out way too much. To actually, write a song, but Paul's my guy. Oh my goodness, yeah, that would be amazing. Um, Jeff Buckley would have been a cool one. Fun story, fun fact. I saw Jeff Buckley's final concert before before he passed away. Um, uh, I was a senior in high school, and um, and. Me and some friends, I grew up in Mississippi, but me and some friends had become huge uh, Jeff Buckley fans. And no, like really no one in that area uh, uh, really knew who that was at the time. He wasn't, he wasn't really uh, sort of as big as he is now. Um, but uh, he, was, he came to Memphis to record uh, his album, My Sweetheart the Drunk. And me and, uh, me and some pals would go up every Monday to, we would actually tell our parents, hey, I'm staying at so-and-so's house. And then they would tell their parents, I'm staying at Jeremy's house. And then we would drive uh, after school and drive all the way up to Memphis, which was three hours away, and, uh, and go hear Buckley on every Monday. He played at this club called Barristers, which I doubt is still there, but who knows. Um, but anyhow, yeah, we got to see him a couple times there. And then um, we saw his, his last show ever before uh, he tragically died in the Mississippi River. But um, he was yeah, a huge, huge influence of mine, uh, especially in, in my earlier years, in my teenage years. Um, man, like another one, Stevie Wonder. Man, that would be one of the coolest things in the world, too. Uh, Rufus Wainwright. Ooh, that's a great one. Uh, I love some some Rufus. Uh, all these are good. All right. Uh, we'll see. Oh, they had one more question. Uh, American Songwriter has asked me, how do you prepare for co-writes? <laughs> Uh, there's a number of different ways. Uh, like I was saying before, sometimes like I'll ask someone what they're listening to or like what they want to create, like what's the purpose behind it. Sometimes I'll just have an idea or an emotion that I really want to uh, bring out and I'll bring that to the table. Uh, most all the time, I like starting from total scratch. I don't, I like kind of like a clear headspace. I don't like having songs in my head. I like just, uh, it's fun just to start from scratch and see what people bring. Like the subconscious is so amazing. Like the fact that we can create things like that. Um, and, and I like to not really think about it too much. Like I'll let someone pick a role, whether it's the, 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 the lyric side or the musical side, or we'll both, you know, collaborate or each of those, but it's just kind of fun just to let people uh, do what feels natural and then see what falls out. I've, I've found that most successful songs that I've written, didn't come from thinking about it too much. It just sort of came from letting um, uh, some free association and the subconscious sort of do the job. Or the, the magic is is there, and I think sometimes it's kind of cool to, to imagine yourself as sort of just being a, a channel or a vessel to a medium to uh, allow it to come out. And, uh, you know, having done the homework and having spent 10,000 hours plus, you know, writing songs and singing and being around music, uh, it's easy for that just to sort of come. The, the, and and the, I think the more I think about it, the more I can lose that. So uh, that's that's a bit of uh, 
the best answer I can give at this moment. But um, yeah, uh, well, I think that is all the time we have. And uh, once again, everyone at Big Yellow Dog, I love you guys. I miss you all. I can't wait to see you. Thanks for setting this up. American Songwriter, I love you guys. Thanks for having me. This is fantastic. Um, yeah, uh, I hope everyone's safe. I hope everyone is feeling well. If you're not feeling well, reach out to someone, whether that's physically or emotionally. Uh, these are strange times, but there's a lot of people out there that um, that, that are helpful and that want to spread love and uh, and and help. So um, if you need anything, hit me up. Send me a message. Let me know. Let me know how you're doing. Love you guys. Uh, have a wonderful afternoon, and I hope to see you again soon.